Tell me about Grandpa, said Simon. Tell me about how you met Grandpa. To tell about Grandpa, said Grandma Anna, I must first tell you the story about the ship and the fire. I want to hear the whole story, said Simon. I came to America with a handkerchief, a pair of socks, and a few dollars hidden in my shoes. The ship from Russia was very crowded. I remember feeling sick for weeks. My heart skipped a beat when I saw the Statue of Liberty for the first time. I knew only one word in English, hello. I called hello to the Statue of Liberty. We arrived at Ellis Island and waited in long lines for hours. Some men took me to a room to ask me questions. I was very scared. I did not understand them. One man looked at my eyes. I heard many people were sent back to Russia if they had trouble with their eyes. My cousins met me in the big room called the Great Room. They took me home to the lower east side of New York. They lived in a very tall building. The streets below were busy and crowded. I had never seen so many people. That day I tasted ice cream for the very first time. My uncle bought one ice cream cone from a pushcart man. Cousin Max let me have the first lick. It tasted like snow, only better. I started work at the Triangle Shirtwaist Company right away. We made very fancy shirts for ladies. I always walked to work with Cousin Max to save cab fare. He liked to smell the warm pretzels on the push carts along the busy streets. Hurry, Max, we'll be late. Run. We worked 10 hours a day, even on Saturday. We both knew that if we were a minute late, our pay would be cut. Since I was only 11 years old, I was too young to run a sewing machine. I was a trimmer. All day long, I cut threads off finished shirts. I only made $2.50 a week. The boss, Mr. Hammond, would cut my pay in half if I snipped the threads the wrong way. We called him Old Rubber Heels. You couldn't hear Mr. Hammond because of his rubber-soled shoes. He would sneak up behind us to catch us talking. We were not allowed to talk, sing, or even hum. The factory building was very hot and dark inside. Many girls worked on the eighth floor. The machines buzzed like a beehive all day long. Dust from the machines filled the room. Some days I sorted big bins of buttons for a girl named Pauline. She helped me practice my English. Everyone knew Pauline. She talked about making the factory better for the workers. During a factory strike, she was not afraid to march outside carrying signs. Cousin Max worked on the floor below with other boys. He collected scraps from the cutters. He taught me to hide from the inspector. Children weren't supposed to work in the factory, but I had to work. I had to pay my uncle and aunt for keeping me and send a dollar each week to my family in Russia. I remember one day when the inspector came. I dove into a large basket filled with scraps. Pauline coughed three times to let me know when it was safe to come out. Some days, old rubber heels turned the clocks back to make us work longer. He locked the doors so we couldn't sneak out. We did not get paid any extra money for working the overtime. We were given a tiny apple pie instead. We got in trouble if we stopped working to eat our pies. Pauline learned how to eat pie with one hand and sew with the other. I'll never forget the terrible day of the fire. We had a very loud crash. Boom! The window shattered and smoke began to fill the room. Flames leapt from the table to table. Some girls ran to the elevator. Others raced to the only fire escape. My knees went weak. I did not know where to go. Pauline threw a bucket of water on me so the flames would not catch the hem of my dress. She grabbed my hand and we ran for the door, but it was locked. Pauline soon found another stairway and pulled me up the smoke-filled stairs to the roof. Students from a school next door stretched a ladder from one roof to the other. Pauline could tell I was too afraid to cross. She showed me how to crawl on all fours. Don't look down, called the young man who was holding the ladder on the other side. I locked my eyes to his as I crawled across the ladder, rung by rung to safety. There was so much noise below. People were running, horses were screaming, bells were ringing, and the smell of smoke filled the air. 
I remember clinging to Pauline's skirt and watching others cross the ladder. Sometime later, Pauline and I marched in a memorial parade for the girls who lost their lives in the fire. People brought food and children gave coins to help the families of those girls. The factory fire changed many lives. New fire safety laws were passed. Factories put up no smoking signs, built more fire escapes, and put in sprinkler systems. Cloth scraps were kept in fireproof bins. Fewer people were allowed to work on one floor, and factories held fire drills to help workers practice what to do in case of a fire. Grandma Anna said, Grandma Anna and Simon stood on the corner where the Triangle Shirtwaist Company used to stand. They read the memorial for the many workers who lost their lives. You forgot to tell me about meeting Grandpa, Simon said. Remember the young man who helped me across the ladder? Asked Grandpa, Grandma Anna. That was Simon, your grandfather. I'm named after him, said Simon. And look, the ice cream man. Grandma Anna bought an ice cream cone for them to share. It tastes like snow, only better, said Simon. Just like my first day in America, said Grandma Anna.